Kelly Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Today I am bringing to you a pretty cool DIY using the clipboards that you can get from the Dollar Tree. Now you can get clipboards just about anywhere for the same budget friendly price of a dollar. But what I really like about the ones at the Dollar Tree is the clip at the top of the board. It's not something big and clunky. It's not something that is going to stand out in this DIY. And that was why I really chose to use the one from the Dollar Tree because the clip is very subtle, it's small, and it does what it needs to do. And so, Really, if you have a Dollar Tree that has these clipboards, I'd most definitely get the clipboard at the Dollar Tree. And if you don't, you can definitely do this DIY with the clipboards from Walmart. Today's DIY, everything that you need for it, you can get from the Dollar Tree, which is really fun to say because a lot of times there are DIYs that I bring to you where you gotta get bits and pieces from different stores or use some stuff that you have on hand. This is one of those DIYs. It is a one-stop shop. If you need paint for this DIY, you can get it at the Dollar Tree for a dollar because they carry paint now. I love this. I can't wait to show you what I do with this clipboard. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into it and let me show you what I have in mind for today's DIY. So here's a quick look, a closer look at the clipboard that I'm using. This is by Jot and it's got this real simple clip here at the top. Using some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of white, this is a matte finished paint. I'm gonna give this clipboard a good few coatings of this on the front and the back side. For this DIY, I'm going with the Ray Dunn look because I really love the chipped enamel look. And so for the clip, I'm going to go over it with a black acrylic paint. This is a chalk paint. Again, I'm using Waverly's paint in the color of ink for this. I found on pieces like this where the clip is going to be used, I don't want the paint to chip. And so if you use a better quality paint, you're gonna find that your paint doesn't chip off. Using an apple barrel paint, I found that it scratches and chips off rather easily. And so for this part of it, I really feel like you should use a better quality paint. And if you give it a good couple coats, it's gonna prevent it from chipping in the long run. Oh my word, I totally forgot that I added this piece to the DIY and this is a non Dollar Tree piece. So, this is a piece that you can get at just about any hobby store. Michaels, Joann's, Walmart carries them. You're gonna pay about a dollar for it. I picked this up because I thought that the decorative edges of this would make for a great addition to the top of the clipboard. And so using a handsaw, this is one that I got at the Dollar Tree. It works pretty well for small pieces like this. Anything much bigger than that, the blade seems a bit flimsy. You can get away with using a straight edge razor. You're just really going to have to score this quite a bit and use a ruler to guide you. I'm going to cut off one side of this frame. Once I've got this frame cut off, I'm going to sand down the edges. Now again, this is an optional step. If you don't want to add this piece to the top of your clipboard, you don't have to. Once I've got those edges good and smoothed out, you can see that this makes for a cool decorative piece. I'm going to go over it with the black chalk paint. Once the paint is good and dry using some hot glue, I'm going to place the hot glue on this bottom edge here and I'm gonna place this on the top of the clipboard, centering it, using the clip, I guess, on the clipboard as a guide. These sponge dabbers that the Dollar Tree carries, it comes in this three pack, using the smaller sponge, this makes for the perfect tool to add that chipped enamel 
edging to a DIY with very little effort. If you try to use a paintbrush, I feel like it just doesn't come out that good because you get those brush strokes. And so by using this dabber, you can just put very little amount of paint on it. And if you just run it along the side, like I said, you're gonna get that awesome, imperfect look that you get with the Ray Dunn chipped enamel. I'll also be using this Live, Laugh, and Love wall decal. Dollar Tree has amazing wall decals. If you see them and you've never picked them up, you might want to pick them up because they make for great embellishments on DIYs, really easy additions. So to the clipboard, I'm going to add the live to the top, the laugh to the center of the clipboard, and the love is going to be for the second part of this DIY. If you thought that I was wrapping this DIY up and it was almost done, no way this DIY gets better. I can't wait for you to see what I turn this into. I'm gonna shift gears a bit because for the second half of this DIY, I will be using the Tumbling Tower wood blocks from the Dollar Tree. So many of you love it when I bring you DIYs using these. Today, we're gonna start off with four sets of three blocks that we're gonna be gluing together side by side. To glue my blocks together, I will be using some of Aileen's Tacky Glue. This glue I have seen amazing results with when using it with these wood blocks. If you wanna use a wood glue, you can use a wood glue. I think it really is just your preference. I do, however, suggest not using the clear Aileen's gel glue. I found that when using that glue with these blocks, it really doesn't hold all that well. Once I've got the four sets of three blocks glued together, I'm gonna glue the sets of three together side by side, just like you see here. Once I've got these four sets glued together, you see here that I have two extra blocks off to the side. I'm gonna glue these together off to each side of this set that I glued together. Now taking 10 more blocks, and this is the last of the blocks that you're gonna need for this DIY, I'm gonna glue four of them together side by side, just like you're seeing here. Once I've got this first row glued together, I'm gonna glue three more to the top of this, centering it with two of the blocks, if that makes any sense. And I'm gonna kind of pyramid this up to one block. Once the glue is dried on these two pieces, on the bottom edge of this piece that I'm gonna call the pyramid piece, I'm gonna add a good amount of the Aileen's glue and I'm gonna set it down onto the base piece here. And it's gonna be placed off to the side, centering it. So you wanna have those two blocks that are standing up still visible. You don't wanna cover those up. Once this is dry, I'm gonna give it a good coating of the white paint. While I was painting this piece, I started to think that I somehow needed to disguise the fact that it was blocks that I was using. Here on the front of this, I feel like it would look so much better if it looked like it was one solid piece rather than blocks that I glued together. So taking some of Dollar Tree's lightweight spackling, this step is completely optional as well. Yes, this is gonna add a bit of work to it, but I feel like the outcome is going to look so much better once I'm done by doing this. If this is something you don't wanna do, you can see that it looks good. I just really wanted to add more of a smoother look to it. And so I'm gonna apply this to the front of these blocks, putting a nice healthy layer of this spackling on. Working with spackling is really easy because once it dries, if you take a wet sponge and go over it, it smooths it out pretty easily. I'm gonna set it aside and let it dry you can see that it is a little bit bumpy once it dries, but if you take a sponge, like I said, a nice wet sponge and you go over it a bit, you're gonna smooth it out quite a bit. I did decide after I used the sponge to go back over it with a real light grade sandpaper just to smooth it out even more. I'm super happy with the way that this looks. Now, I do wanna be clear that I was not looking for perfection when smoothing this out. This is supposed to be a chipped enamel piece, which means that there would be a bit of damage to something. And so I felt like if I didn't completely smooth this out, that it would give the illusion of dents in a metal piece. 
And like I said, when I was thinking about that, I really wanted to disguise the fact that these were blocks that I was using. This is exactly the look that I was envisioning. So now that I've got that, I'm just gonna go back over this with a quick coat of the white paint. And again, using the sponge, I'm gonna outline the edges of this piece with the black paint as well. With this last decal, it's a bit too big, so I'm gonna cut off beyond words and just keep the word love, and I'm gonna place it right on the front here. I'm gonna place a bit of the Aileen's glue on this back edge here because this piece is gonna go right here at the bottom of this clipboard. To help keep this piece in place because it's a bit top heavy and it kept wanting to fall forward, I just placed the glue bottle right up underneath it, kept it there until it dried. Once I removed it, it stayed in place and it was good to go. Look at how pretty this looks. I am so excited, but we're not done because as I stood this up, I realized that if I put a book in this, it was gonna fall backwards and so to help prevent that from happening I'm going to take six of the blocks I'm going to glue them on top of each other so they're I guess too wide or too thick then I'm going to glue two of them together side by side and one in front right where the two blocks meet then I'm just going to place some glue on the back side of the two blocks that are together and I'm going to glue this to the bottom part here of the clipboard in the back And because this was an afterthought, we can't leave it brown, so I'm gonna give it a quick coat of the white chalk paint. And we are done. Let's go take a look at this. And there we have it, a recipe holder. That's what I made it for. Not only does it hold a book, this here is my mom's searchlight recipe book that I got when she passed away. It holds it perfectly while it's closed. It'll hold it perfectly while it's open and you don't have to worry about it falling forward or falling backward because of the pieces that we add to the back of this. If you don't wanna use a recipe book and you have recipe cards, the clip on top is perfect to hold those recipe cards or even a recipe that has been handed down to you that was printed out or written out by a loved one. If you don't wanna use this as a recipe holder, you can very easily use this as an iPad holder too if you go off of recipes using your iPad. Honestly, I have always wanted a recipe holder like this. One that could be for a page that you need to clip up and follow along with, or one that you could use to put a recipe book in, like my mom's searchlight one that I've had for so many years. It is one of those treasured, valued, pieces that my mom had forever and I am so glad that I have it now that she's gone. Every time I see it in my kitchen, it really just makes me feel like my mom is in there with me and this piece today is definitely one that this Searchlight cookbook is going to stay in. I love this piece. I think it's a useful piece and not only is it useful, but it is rustic, it is farmhouse and it serves as a decor piece as well. I hope you all enjoyed today's DIY of this recipe book holder using 100% Dollar Tree items. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to, you guessed it, 5,000 likes. Because honestly, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget and bye for now, everybody. Thank you.